This is Matt Reisinger and Jordan Smith from the Build Show, reporting at the International Builder Show. Now we're here on behalf of the Journal of Light Construction and Builder Magazine, and Jordan and I are going to walk the halls and see what's interesting, what's cool, what's worth making a video on. So join us as we walk the floor. <laughs> Oh, look at this chocolatey looking wood. I'm a sucker for a good hardwood siding. Look how pretty that is. I actually thought this was Ipe when I saw it, but of course the rain screen really sucked me in. I love a good rain screen detail. That's that air gap behind your siding, which gives a huge amount of durability to your house. Cool clip system here. We're actually at the Dosso booth. Now this looks like an Ipe or a hardwood siding, but in fact, this is a man-made bamboo product. Check this out. Made in China, they've got a lot of bamboo in China, very fast growing, it's a grass basically. They take that bamboo, they toast out all the sugars and all the organics so that the bugs and everything else won't want it. And then they infuse it with phenolic resin. Think bowling balls, that's what phenolic resin is. So this is the off cut, and then they make it into these boards. Now, God, these are some heavy boards. Check this out. They've got it from two by sixes, two by eights, not quite as heavy as Ipe, but really stinking heavy. They've got porch flooring, they've got decking, all kinds of stuff. Now, I've never used this and frankly never seen it before, but they say that it's got a 30-year warranty, that it's Class A fire rated, that it's totally dimensionally stable, unlike Ipe and other woods that might move or cup over time. It does gray out, and this sample supposedly was out in a parking lot for three years. And so it grayed out and all they did was put some oil on top to bring back that natural color. Now I've never used it before, you gotta do your own research. I'm not endorsing it. I am a little worried that that phenolic resin might have some UV damage and you might see some structural damage over time, but they say if you oil this and maintain it with oil that you got a 30 year warranty. You're sure not gonna find that on ePay or any other hardwood decking. And it looks like it'd be pretty easy to bring that color back. So. Lots of options here. You can actually buy this uh, from my friends at Timbertown in Austin or Atlanta. But do your research. Like I said, I'm curious what the longevity is. I don't know how many years this has been in production. I'm curious to know what it looks like in 10 years. I'll put a link in their website below. Like I said, you can buy it from the Timbertown guys. It looks to me like it's pretty promising. We're out here at the Bromble booth and check out this huge operable door. So this is all handmade. You can tell all of the welds are hand welded. They use gas metal arc on these brackets here. They use gas tungsten arc on the spindles of this wheel. It's very steampunk. It's just very low tech, low key. It's already rusting in place. It's really, really pretty. They do the counterweight just like what we did over on our West 10 project with the guys over at Drop House. But what's cool about this is it's a custom steel design that you can buy from them direct and then they ship it out to you. It's not a site fabrication like what we're used to, but it looks really cool, very low tech. Like I said, very steampunk. You can tell that it's all hand fabricated and a little bit sloppy. It's not real cleaned up. I like this door. I like the windows. Okay guys, coming to you from the Bosch booth, you know I'm big HVAC and water heating nerd. So when I saw a clear design over here, I knew I needed to come see this. So here's what they got. They've got a compressor for the outdoor unit. Two sizes, a three ton and a five ton. And I've talked a bunch over the years about VRF technology, variable refrigerant flow, where the compressor can vary its capacity. Most of these are either on or off and that's it. You've got one speed. This one is slightly different than VRF. It actually is a stepping motor, 85 steps to be exact. It can go from 25% all the way up to actually beyond 100%. So this is a three ton unit that will actually output 40,000 BTUs, meaning an extra 10% roughly of capacity. Now this is a 20 plus sear unit. If you go above that capacity, it's gonna reduce the energy efficiency, so you're not gonna get 20 sear out of it. But here's the game changer here. This can work with other manufacturers' indoor units, meaning you could use this on a retrofit. If you need a new compressor on the outside, but your indoor unit's doing just fine, you could leave your existing ductwork your existing coil on the inside and mate this up. So this is actually a unit that could be used 
really well on a remodel or just a, a switch out or a change out like the HVAC guys call it. Now you've also got their gas and their indoor units, so if you're doing new construction, very, very efficient. I like that their indoor unit has a two-speed ECM motor. That's a lot of geek speak for meaning you've got better humidity control because we can change the fan speed, and that ECM motor is going to be very efficient. Now what else does Bosch have? Check this out. They've gone big time into the geothermal world. They've got a water source heat pump. Meaning, if you're building a lake house, you put a loop in the lake, and this is going to exchange heat instead of to the air, to the water, which is going to end up being much, much more efficient. You put your geothermal loops in the ground, too, of course. Now, Bosch, you probably know Bosch from their water heater world. They've been in that for many, many, many years. And they've got some cool units. Look at this ultra-efficient unit they've got. This is kind of their top-of-the-line unit. It's got a pump in there so you can actually pump the water through. It's got a Wi-Fi connectivity, but I like that it's actually pretty. You know, I like, to, I like to show off my mechanical rooms. I'm a huge nerd. I'd want a nice looking unit, especially if this was mounted, let's say, in the garage. You pull in your, in your BMW, you want a nice looking unit in the garage. How cool is that? Kind of a glass front. Also, you've got top connections up here, which is usually only seen on the retrofit models, but this could be used in retrofit or new construction. That's a really nice unit. Now anytime I talk tankless water heaters, I always get feedback from the guys overseas who say, what about electric tankless? Now most electric tankless, they're not super pretty. Check out these tanks right here. I mean, they're okay. But new this year from Bosch, which is coming out I think second quarter, are these really sleek looking units. Look at that. That's going to be much cooler looking. You could put those in a point source around the house. Let's say a hand washing station, an outdoor kitchen, one of those smaller units. Now this is only really going to feed 2.5 gallons or less. So uh, it's going to be just for a particular point. But another big thing they're doing with this is now they reduce the activation flow rate, meaning you've got to have enough flow through there before it's going to turn on. And the older models, and it sounds like a bunch of models on the market, had to have at least a half gallon per minute or more. This one goes down to 0.2 gallons per minute. Let me finish off with this real quick. This is their standard uh, not standard, this is their more uh, normal unit, I should say. Don't you wish they actually could come with a glass cover? This is just for the IBS show, but I thought, man, I'd love to have that in my garage. Guys, for more information on Bosch, check out the link below, but very impressed with these guys. So new to show this year is Mitex Hardy Frame Lateral Load System. So what this is, is it's a frame that increases the lateral load around any type of a large window. You can do it for garages. Great for multifamily where you have large picture windows stacking all the way up. One of the things in the past when you did a structural uh, seismic system like this special moment frame here, it's heavy and it's welded. You have to dig out and put a beam in. You have to weld the whole thing together. This system here, both the CFS picture frame and the CFS portal frame, comes in as stacked pieces and they bolt together so you don't have to mobilize welders. It makes it very quick and instead of using wood, you have a much more structurally sound, much more engineered solution. What I think is really cool is when you do this in multiple sections as you stack up, you double the capacity when you use the picture frame version, but then notice how they have a picture frame on top of a picture frame and they have an all thread going through connecting the whole system together for like a multi-story or a multi-family structure. They have a Z4 tie-down system that goes right here and this actually ratchets down. Here I got one right here. This guy, as it racks back and forth, this works just like a zip tie. This all three goes through this fastener and it tightens the building. So the more the building moves, the tighter it gets and it pulls everything down really tight. MyTech makes a lot more than just trust is what we talked about a few weeks ago on the build show. I didn't know this, but they've got a full line of concrete fasteners, concrete adhesives, wood fasteners, and then they've got a sister company called Ozco that is really cool for, I just did a cedar um, awning on one of my projects and it's got that ugly concrete tie down on it that comes up the side and I'm gonna have to trip this out or trim this out, but this version here it is in a powder coated black that looks very nice and you can leave it exposed. They have all kinds of different accessories for it too. So you can do drink holders and all kinds of other stuff. A lot of cool stuff from MyTech. They always have really innovative high-end building solutions. How's this for a showstopper at the International Builder Show? You want to get some builders to stop by and take a look at something? 
put a 12 foot tall mahogany curved sliding door in. And look at this beautiful privacy screen that goes with it. Also Honduran mahogany. Talk about craftsmanship, dang. Not only that, the sill that this rides on that has the track on it, all Ipe too. This is awfully pretty. We're at the Caoba booth. This is a Guatemalan company that, man, they have some good craftsmanship. I've been really impressed. Now they've got all kinds of different windows and doors, but what's the story here? Why, why is this interesting? You know, the architects that I work with, they want really custom windows and doors. They want cool stuff. And these guys make everything custom in the details. Look at this. When you do, when you do a cladding on the exterior that's got a uh, aluminum finish, normally you're seeing a miter joint right here. No, they've done the welding, they've done the sanding and grinding before it goes to the finish booth so that just the details sing. Look at that giant door. It looks like about a 12 foot tall pivot door, mahogany on the inside. Has some pretty stuff. Come on around to this other side. You know I love some lift and slides. Look at this big old lift and slide. It's got a white oak interior. If you're not familiar with lift and slides, they slide when the handle is down and you put the handle up and now they're locked in place. And check this out. Architects also love a nice flush sill from the inside to out. Now we're at the builder show. This is the carpet from the convention center. But what they're showing here is on this Epe sill, you could mate right in with your inside here. You could mate your outside in here, and then they've got a, a tube system that any water that's coming down on the door and lands in between here, they've done a cutaway so they can show you that tubing could go to the outside and run to a drain system if you're in a hot climate or if you're in a cold climate. Let's say this door is going in Wisconsin where it's cold outside, that would freeze. You could pipe this to the inside and drain out so it wouldn't freeze. Got to say, there's some really good craftsmanship on display here. The other cool thing, I got a chance to talk to the owner who gave me a booth tour. They're a really responsible company. They've got like 400 some employees in Guatemala. They sponsor the employees' students to go to school because in Guatemala you usually stop in the fifth grade. But these guys are sponsoring 160 students who are going beyond that. Really cool company. I believe it's KaobaDoors.com. If you're an architect, highly recommend you check them out. Really nice people and just really solid craftsmanship. All right, Jordan, what are we doing here, brother? We have got one of the coolest acoustic kinematic displays at the show. Everybody let her off. Whoa! Whoa. This, is, <laughs> this is about 100, 100 dB in there, and between the quiet fiber and the acoustic block 16, you don't get hardly any sound. I can't hear it right now. If it was completely quiet, you'd hear it a little bit, but it's Dang. killing so much of the sound transmission that across there. That is some there. fantastic elastic plastic. <laughs> it's actually a, vi a, uh, a polymer, viscoelastic. viscoelastic polymer, viscoelastic polymer, but I like fantastic elastic plastic. Yeah. These guys better. might want to patent that. That's a Trademark. good word, I think. Trademark the build show. So three things when it comes to air sealing real quick. You want, or not air sealing, acoustic blocking. You want to seal the air, you want to add mass, and you want to keep it floppy because you want to turn the sound pressure waves, okay. it's energy, you want to turn that into heat, which is another type of energy, but we don't hear heat. It burns it up. Yep, so yep. this is your basically a mass loaded vinyl. Okay. And it's burning up that energy as the sound wave hits it. It's flopping back and forth and burns it up. If you want to add more. And it's heavy too, right? It's heavy. It's got minerals in it's it. Got so dense it's dense mass. Exactly. So it's very heavy. Yep. Adding more, you add the quiet fiber. Now this is a mineral wool that they put stuff in, but it's basically a mineral wool. Okay. Here's the trick to this. You don't put it in there tight. As builders, we always want to build stuff strong and really cram it together. That's opposite of what you want to do for acoustic it needs to be transmissions. Loose and floppy. You want to drop it in there, keep it loose and floppy. It'd be a little bit bigger than that, but it's not touching your channels or your studs on either side. And then, so you've got an interior partition here, right? Steel yep. studs. What's this, Jordan? What are they showing? So this underneath? is an aerogel anti-vibration mat. This decouples from the bottom. So one of the mistakes uh -huh. that you make as a builder a lot of times, you put all of this money in this wall, and you're like, the sound will not pass this wall, and it sounds like, all right, I'll go right over the top or I'll go right underneath, right? right? So you gotta right. think about all the different paths, both over the top, underneath, where the two walls connect. Yep. So if this was the side wall, you could do the same thing, where you bring this wall into the next one, you decouple those. Yeah. You wanna make sure that you think about the whole enclosure, not just one wall. Man, that's some cool stuff. Now they have something else over here 
that I've never seen before that Jordan showed me earlier, and I was like, what? This is nuts. So, so this what is this? Looks by... like some radar Doppler or something. Yeah. something. yeah, so it's Norsonic. So this whole thing here is a microphone element picking up our voices, but it's directional. It knows exactly where the sound's coming from. If you look at that monitor up there, you see I'm talking. Yeah, and... I'm talking now, and it's getting my voice. Exactly. So here I'm snapping, and you'll see it picks up. And then what's cool about this is if I'm in a room that's very loud, and I know that, say, I've got an air conditioner that's loud. I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take care of that. But I also want to know where the room modes are, where the problem points are from the reflections, right? Yep. If I'm trying to yep. deaden the room, tune the room, I can use this thing. I can block the air conditioner. I can tell it right there on that screen, ignore that, and it finds the next loudest level. No and then way. I say, ignore that, and it finds the next loudest level. So what I'm thinking is from a air ceiling standpoint, could you use this just like you use your Fleur to find right, paths heat. of heat right. through a wall. Infrared heat. Exactly. Instead heat. of that, sound this Ex time. You look for sound, which would infer an air leak because sound travels through air, air so much better than Ooh. other other media. So Dude, that this is, is cool. really cool. My it's, guess is that's not an inexpensive device. Probably not. It's made by Norsonic. They're not here at the booth. This is a diagnostic tool that Acoustic Block helps them to, to, to tune rooms, but I'm gonna see if I can get them to send me one so we can play with it. Dude, I gotta say, Jordan, that box that had the Elvis going in there, when you reveal that, that's, yeah. that's one of the coolest displays Absolutely. Of the show. All right, so, oh, there you are, Jordan. So what do you think, guys? There's some interesting stuff. Jordan, really cool show. Are you, really catch cool your breath, show. brother. Catch your breath. A lot going on. It was a whip. We had so whip. many speaking engagements, so many videos, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of cool products. It really was. And you know what? What, what else was cool is we got to go out and get a personal tour of the New American Home before they even show, the show started. What did you think about the New American Home? I liked it. There was it wasn't as advanced on the building science and things that you know me and you care about and talk about. But yeah. from a consumer level, a lot of really cool automation, a power door, a lot of <laughs> a lot of neat stuff that you don't see on everyday homes. And it was totally Vegas. I mean, those huge oh, those huge walls Vegas. that opened up and you could see all the way down across yeah. the valley and the lit up fireplaces. So it was cool. It's very worthwhile going. Yeah, no doubt. What I thought was interesting was. Actually, the house under construction next yeah. door, right? We're in the desert, so you don't have to build with the same details as we do, where we get 35 inches of rain in Austin. But look, you gotta do water management details. You're building a super expensive house, and that house next door, I was not impressed. I'm not trying to call it the builder, but look, you, you do a modern house, no overhangs. You're using one layer of 15 pound felt. Come on, this is 2019, people. We can do better. On the other hand, the New American Home, they had, a, they had a cool cutaway in the garage, which I thought was really cool. And they showed on the cutaway how they're using a drainage mat. Then they're using an exterior foam on top of that. And then they've got a stucco on there. And the stucco actually has a drainage mat behind there. So not tons of rain, not maybe the same detail I would use, but exterior insulation, they did a good job on that. And I like that they were showing all the tour goers that cutaway display. Yeah. Jordan, anything else from the show that you saw that we didn't get a chance to video at the booth? So there was one video that we didn't get and that was this window. Remember, we were back oh, in Germany and we yeah. saw some really cool yeah. windows. I was hoping that I'd see that same quality. I didn't see it from anybody except for one, and I'm gonna say Chinese uh, manufacturer. They've officially passed us Americans on being able to provide a tri-pane ceiling window. It's all German hardware. It looks really good. I haven't used it personally. Yeah, I can't yeah. endorse it, but we're going to try to get some of those windows over here and start testing them out because they are distributing in the U.S. So I'm not even going to say the manufacturer right now until we get a little bit further down the road because I don't want to give a recommendation. I don't know it, but it looked like a really encouraging product that maybe we're moving that way into that high-end window. I wish I had more time to see more of the window displays, but I didn't see any triple glaze and I sure didn't see some of those same details we saw overseas. I'm hoping that we're gonna see more of that, and it's probably out there, but we just didn't see it. We were busy, man. Jordan, I did a bunch of talks on stage. I did some Rockwell booth talks. It was, it was quite a whip for me for the, for the week, but we also really enjoyed meeting the Build Show fans. A ton of people came, to us, came up to us and said, hey, I appreciate your videos. Appreciate what you're doing from the industry and pushing people to build better, to build higher performance, to do more durable products. And that really makes Jordan and I encouraged when we yeah. see that. We see these American builders here 
that are taking care and thought into building better and better houses. So guys, if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. Big thanks to our friends at the Journal of Light Construction and Builder Magazine for sponsoring the trip. Look for a link in the description. You know, I've been an NAHB member now for all 15 years I've been in business. And the JLC and Builder Magazine really is the voice of our industry. You should subscribe to their weekly newsletters. I'll put a link for both of those below. Hit that subscribe button, follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.